What's it like scoring a winning goal at Old Trafford as a Liverpool player, which I believe you did <laughs> three times, didn't you? I did. Uh, what's it like? Oh. <laughs> it's quite surreal, actually. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of history for me with that fixture in terms of being a Liverpool fan. I had three older brothers. One of them was Man U. Mm. So that became a little bit of a bitter rivalry at a young age. My first ever Liverpool game in 85 was Liverpool Man U. And first one. Yeah, lost one nil. Frank's day putting head. I was on the cop. I'll right. tell you something else as well. One pound eighty to get in. <laughs> Used to go into a different entrance than my dad and then meet yeah. him in. First time I ever went to uh, wow. Anfield, yeah. Um, but back to the question that the the build up I'm talking about is like the knowledge an understanding of a rivalry that had gone mm. on for a long, long time in terms of two really successful clubs, quite close proximity. Yeah. The in-house stuff with my brother. Um, and then getting to go there and play. It's it's something you look back on now and don't even now really re realise how important it was because the mm. first time I scored there, we hadn't won there for 10 years. 10 years. And Man U were the, the pinnacle. Yeah. They were a hell of a side with brilliant players. But weirdly, I'd been my second ever start for Liverpool in my first season was at Old Trafford in a 1 1 draw. Mm. Michael scored and got sent off. And I played up front second half on my own. <laughs> and I uh, got man in a match. Yeah. So going back there the next time, which wasn't the next season, it was the one after where I scored the first goal. I think there was a degree of comfortableness in me anyway because I'd had a good game there. And footballers will tell you this a lot. That when you've had good experience somewhere, each time you go back, you kind of feel like it's going to happen again. Mm. A bit like a nightclub or a bar where you always get <laughs> you always get a bird at the end of the night. It's like, let's go there again. You've got a good spot. track record there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, game wasn't particularly great, really. It was a bit scruffy. Anyway, I got the goal. And uh, we, we, we sought it out for the 1-0. Um, I remember the first one vividly because it was the first one and being on the the thing that sticks out in my memory the most was this overwhelming sense of contentment and excitement and happiness all in one mm. sitting on the coach waiting to leave not yeah. even the celebrating on the pitch after right yeah yeah sitting on the bus where it all sunk in you could see all the United fans waiting to see their players and that giving us abuse and God knows what <laughs> and I just had this and my phone started going. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, the old Nokia's and all. It was just the old beep, beep, beep. <laughs> so this this overwhelming feeling of, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I've just got the winner at Old Trafford. And um, that night we went to a hotel bar place in Chester on Hill Road and um, probably about 50 people came down, mates of mine. And others tagging on. It was some night, yeah. honestly. Mm -hmm. And then when it happened again the second time, that was a very different feeling because of the fact that I'd, I'd had a little bit of a bad run a couple of games before. And Julio was ill, actually. Tomo took the team, I think, that night, Phil Thompson. And I scored late on. And me, Stevie and Tomo, after the final whistle, went up to the fans and they were singing my name and stuff. And it was kind of like I'd put the, the bad run to bed. Yeah. And that meant a hell of a lot to me because it was the first little time I'd had a bad spell. And some of the fans were a little bit, mm, is he, isn't he, you know. And then the third one was just ridiculous, really. It was like, in fact, there's a tale behind the third one, I'll tell you quickly, is that Michael was on penalties. And Michael was on penalties no matter how many he missed. Yeah. Because Julia is just like, no, I trust Michael, I trust Michael. <laughs> it's like, well, he's missed three out of his last six, for God's sake. <laughs> anyway, we got one, second half. And Michael said, yeah, I'll take it. And I thought, what? So there was no time to think about it. Anyway, I scored. And then coming off and winning again and scoring again, it was actually, the lads were laughing. Even I was a bit like, what is going on here? So it became like synonymous with me, if you like, over the years when I left Liverpool and, mm. you know, I would, someone would always come up to me and go, that, that, whichever goal it was, you know, that goal at United, that goal at United, that, wherever I've been in the world, mm. 
You know, I've had conversations about it in the middle of the Indian Ocean, <laughs> in the Masai Mara. <laughs> wow. Honestly. Um, and do you know what? I've told this tale many times, but I, I, I don't mind repeating myself. I scored probably one of my best ever goals as a uh, at Goodison in, uh, against Everton. It was the winner, late on, 2-1. And everywhere I've been in the world, nobody's ever asked me about it. Mm. And that tells you everything you need to know about the rivalry. Yeah, and how global it is if you're That's you know, it. in Kenya and, and all sorts. Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Um, did it feel extra sweet given the opposition manager that uh, <laughs> you were scoring those goals to beat, beat Fergie? Um... No, not so much him, just their okay. success. Yeah, okay. And their, their brilliance, because so many of those players, I mean, Scholes, Nicky Bart, Beckham, Phil Neville, Gary Neville, those types, I'd played against in like reserves and youth teams. They're a bit older than me. Phil was my age. Me and Phil played together for England schoolboys. Um, so it was a bit like trying to put yourself, nudge yourself to their level. And by scoring in those goal, and get, goals in those games and contributing you're kind of making yourself noticed and thinking mm. I'm important, I'm relevant. And then obviously got in England squads with those guys. I respected them so much. I mean, I hated them when I played against them, but I couldn't help but respect them because they were so talented. Yeah. So it wasn't Fergie, no. Okay. Although I did see Fergie years later. Um, I was standing outside, I think it was the Grove in London, um, somewhere after a charity event mm. in the morning. We're both waiting for taxis. He said to me, you're a right pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'd say that as a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. absolutely. This is still when you're playing at that point? Or you'd I think I was still playing it. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah, I think I was, yeah. <laughs> but it was after I'd left. Yeah. Liverpool. That's a, that's, a, that's a great compliment. If you enjoyed this, you can watch the full two-hour-long episode with Danny Murphy right here.